Hola, bienvenidos a esta entrevista especial. Estoy aquí con Greg Joswe. Aquí vamos a hablar de todo lo que anunciaron en WWDC 2025. Greg, thank you so much for the time. I know you're a busy guy. Well, thank you for joining us. You know, it's a very big week for us, a special week. We WWDC, you know, comes around every year. We get to tell people the stuff we've been working on, the stuff we're going to bring to a great many users over the course of the next year. Yeah, it's always exciting being here. Thanks for the invite and the opportunity. Um, we saw a lot of cool features on mm -hmm. WWDC, so we probably don't have time to get through all of them. No, probably not. There's a lot. <laughs> But I want to start with Apple Intelligence, because okay. I know that's um, an important topic mm -hmm. that's like kind of sprinkled around all of mm -hmm. Apple ecosystem. And I've noticed, especially this year now more than ever, that Apple Intelligence isn't actually an an app like mm -hmm. you see with ChatGPT or other products. Mm -hmm. Um, was this intentional from the start or, or mm -hmm. basically what I want to ask is what is the goal for Apple yeah. intelligence? Well, that's a, you almost gave a great answer because it's <laughs> one of the things that I've explained to people is like we didn't just try to create Apple intelligence as a destination, as you said, as an app or as another chat bot. Uh, they already exist. They're great. You know, they allow you to do amazing things. You know, I love using chat GPT uh, and that's why we did it. We figured out how to work with the best for when you want to do that sort of thing. And for us, that was an open AI with ChatGPT. What we want to do is say, okay, rather than just create another one of these things that already exists and it's already very good, we want to go down a different approach than what others are doing. And what we want to do is take generative AI and use it much like we had used prior generations of, arti uh, of artificial intelligence as an enabling technology to make the features of our products, our operating systems, our apps better to do things that you couldn't do with them without generative AI, but not even make it something that you necessarily even to know or think about that you're using artificial intelligence. Instead, the experience just getting it gets better for you. And, uh, and clearly that has been our strategy from last year. And maybe we weren't clear enough when we were talking <laughs> about it because I do think people are getting it more this year, to your point, yeah. uh, than they were getting it last year. And But this is very much our strategy. I saw one of the demos I just had recently, um, it working on something that wasn't mentioned in the keynote, something very specific, but in the reminders app, mm -hmm. where it, they grabbed some context from a website and they made a list of reminders. Yeah. Yeah. And it with Apple intelligence, put the reminders on the reminders app. Yeah. And then in the reminders app, it actually categorized categorize the yes. reminders and, yeah. and I, my immediate thought was that's really useful. Yeah. And that's not something um, reactive where I'm like asking a chatbot that's more like yes. proactive getting suggested yes. to do this type yeah. of features and I think that's where it's actually useful in the in yeah. every day. It's exactly a great example and there's there's so many others and again some of them are obvious when you use Apple intelligence if you know if you're um, you know, using visual intelligence, you obviously know your intelligence or using Image Playground or Genmoji, you realize you're doing that. But so many other features are just enabled by it, you know, whether it's, you know, live translation that's doing the translation and messages or FaceTime or phone app or, you know, whether it's Workout Buddy, you know, that you, yeah. can, you can use, you know, on your Apple Watch or, you know, just so many things that, again, are enabled by this idea of generative AI, which can generate language and generate imagery uh, and to do it in, again, in a very Apple way that just integrate it to your experience. And, you know, you don't have to learn how to do a prompt line <laughs> or, you know, how to, how to get these things out of it. It, it just is part of our feature set. Specifically with uh, Workout Buddy, I also got a, a nice demo. The voice is really natural and, yeah, and, yeah. and it empowers you to do this yeah. type of, of exercises. But uh, where do you draw the line? Because it's an AI that helps you with motivation. It's mm -hmm. something very human. Yeah. Like you, you it's, it's not like a prompter. So how do you draw that line so that it keeps being human, not so robotic, but also yeah. familiar? Because yeah. AI for a lot of people is is kind of scary, yeah. in a sense. It is. I mean, and again, for a lot of folks, it's uh, it can be intimidating just because of the fear of the unknown. Yeah. And for a lot of people, they see, okay, I've got these experts who are able to use these chatbots and generate these incredible prompts and able to get amazing things out of it. And, and that's great. And like I said, that, that, those things do those things quite wonderful. Mm -hmm. But for the vast majority of people, they want the technology to disappear. Yeah. You know, that's what we've tried to pride ourselves on. It's like, look, our, our, we're doing our best when the technology or the product disappears. And you just get to focus on what you want to do. When it just works. When it just <laughs> works. You don't have to think about 
what's the technology behind it? How is it doing this magical thing? You just focus on what you want to do. And you don't even, like I said, you don't even know need to know you're using artificial intelligence. It just is something there that's in the background that's helping you do these things. And uh, to us, that's when we're at our best. So with this uh, foundational mm -hmm. models on, on device for developers and how are they going to use them, I was just uh, wondering maybe what are some examples and how we can see. Yeah. Great question. I mean, because we're so excited by the fact that we give developers powerful tools. They can do amazing things. We showed a couple of things in the keynote, which is one was uh, Kahoot which was they took okay. the took all your notes as a student might have, and it was able to then generate using Apple models uh, on the fly a test to test you on your notes. Um, another one we showed was that uh, we used a, an, an app called All Trails, mm -hmm. which was able to take uh, all your uh, hiking information, and even though you were offline, off the grid, be able to convert that and using our models and turn that into a recommendation for your day's hike, you know, and how you do it. It does it all on device, doesn't send your information anything else, anywhere else. They didn't have to pay any, you know, cloud API fee, fees. And what I'm amazed at is that's just the beginning, right? As we as we provide this to developers, they're going to create amazing things that, uh, you know, I, I'm sure you and I can't even dream of at this point. Yes, that, that's what I'm excited of because we've seen what Apple can do with its own models mm -hmm. and, and LLMs and advanced machining. And given that, those tools to developers is going to be great to yes. see what they can yeah. come up with. Um, and I have to ask, um, since you mentioned it in the keynote, which I like that you came up front and, and addressed the new personal Siri. Mm -hmm. um, you said in the keynote specifically that you needed more time to mm -hmm. develop it, and it's coming, I think, in the coming year, yeah, 2026. Yeah, quality bar, yeah. Yeah, and um, I just wanted to ask, because I think it's a question that a lot of my audience is asking, like, What's so difficult yeah, about yeah. about creating this new Siri, um, and yeah. what are the challenges behind yeah, it? Yeah, great question. Well, last year at WWDC, uh, World Wide Small Developers yeah. Conference, we introduced Apple Intelligence, and we talked yeah. about really a bigger picture of the things that we were looking to uh, to bring to Apple Intelligence over the coming you know over the coming next year or so. Uh, we delivered the vast majority of those things. Yeah, you know, because some of the things we said look will be coming out over the next few months. One of the ones that we, we knew was hard was the personal context Siri. And we were showing working code. We were showing that, you know, working uh, at WWC last year. We thought we'd be able to ship it later in the year. Uh, it, it was working, but the error rate was just too high. Okay. Right? And so we thought, okay, maybe we'll be able to ship, you know, keep working on it. We'll ship it in the spring. And again, it just wasn't. We didn't want to deliver a solution to our customers. It would be frustrating if it didn't work yeah. nearly all the time. And, and I'm sure it's a big responsibility when you have like billions of devices across and the planet. 100%. And so we had to make a choice to say, okay, do we ship it just because we said we'd ship it? Yeah. Or do we say, no, we're going to hold this back until we can ship it at a much higher quality? And we knew we were working on a new generation of Siri that would actually make this work much better. Uh, and it is a difficult thing to do. No one's done it. <laughs> right. This is something we, we were trying to do that yeah. still today. That's no, why we're all excited yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no one's shipped it yet. No one's done it. And so we're excited to be able to deliver it. It will be in the coming years. So it'll be coming in 2026. Cool. As we get closer to it, we'll talk more about it and more about the details yeah. and more about the timing. Uh, but again, it's probably important to set context too. We look at Apple intelligence and this generative AI thing is not a one year, two year, three year sort of thing. This yeah. is the sort of thing we're going to be working on for a decade or decades. It's much like the impact that the internet had on our products or, or mobile computing had on our products. These are big themes that you know will last a long time and, and it's also important for us to build the right foundation you know as we then build these things on top of it and, and that's what we're trying to do. I agree. No, and, and I think um, there's still a lot of uh, potential and things we maybe haven't even mm -hmm. heard, heard of with artificial intelligence and everything that's coming out. So thanks for the answers on, on Apple Intelligence. I, I think I'm in using it more and more each day, and I'm excited for all the same, new... Same with me. I, I use it every day. Yeah. yeah. For, for the, also for the new features, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. But I wanted to shift the conversation a little bit to the other big announcement this, which is the, the new design. Wow. Yeah, very We're exciting. all excited about a liquid glass specifically, because mm -hmm. um, 
I'm, I've been an, an Apple user basically my whole life, and getting like a fresh coat of paint on all your devices, <laughs> it's it's really fun and, yeah. and it feels fresh. And I've been playing around with the with the beta, the the refraction and the animations. I it, it actually feels new but still similar like someone yeah. like maybe my my mom who uses an iphone you don't want them to be too yeah. to change too much so no. how, how, how do you thread that line of yeah. being like new enough but not so much that it's like causing chaos well all it's, it's funny because your questions are so good they often have the right answer uh <laughs> because that is exactly the right thinking that we have it's like look we have over a billion you know a couple billion devices well over a billion customers out there when you create something fresh and new, it's important for it to be familiar because you can't have a billion people who don't know what yeah. to do, <laughs> right? And so it's always an important for, uh, thing for our design team. And big design refreshes are not something you do very often. We do about every decade or so. The last mm -hmm. one was what we had introduced with iOS 7 in 2013. Yes, that right? was so 12, 12, 12 years 12 ago. 12 years. I know, isn't it amazing? And at <laughs> the time, was. that was enabled because we had moved the retina displays and we had you know, A6 chip, which seemed powerful mm -hmm. at the time. And it enabled us to, to look at software as a matter of trading it as layers, a little flatter, more vibrant colors. And it was an experience that, you know, was simplified and kind of set our course for this next, but now it's up being 12 years. We wanted to be able to freshen it up, but not just arbitrarily. You know, the team had been doing great work with Vision OS over the last few years. You know, that product has been in development for quite some time. And part of that interface of, of Vision Pro with Vision OS is with glass, mm -hmm. right, as the, as, as the design element. Because as you were mapping digital uh, elements into the real world, glass turned out to be a very useful material for that. And the team became enamored to, can we take this same experience of glass, refine it further, and apply it to our other products, which is important. I said products, right? Because when we yeah. did the this redesign of iOS 7, that was just for iPhone and iOS. And even though then we started to take those elements further, we wanted to do a, a much broader vision here to say, look, let's take this design and let's bring it across all of our platforms, right? Let's bring it across, you know, iPad and Mac and, you know, as well as iOS, as well as tvOS and you know, watch OS and have yeah. that, that commonality of experience because so many of our products own multiple of our devices. And we want to make, you know, they do come from the same company, the same design yeah. team. They should feel familiar as you're going across them. And so it was a, a very important effort for the team to then, as we do this, as, as we talked about, to have something new, fresh. It feels like you have a new device, yet at the same time, instantly familiar. Yeah. You know what to do. Uh, and for us, again, design is important to us. It's important to our users. Design is both how something looks as well as how it works and how it makes you feel. And so this has uh, all those elements of allowing us to do something fresh. We are able to streamline some other interfaces of some of our apps and our experiences. And as, as it sounds like for you, it makes me feel great <laughs> using it. No, yes, I, yeah. I, I really love yeah. it and I'm enjoying the whole yeah. the whole liquid glass thing. And, and there's this particular thing with glass, even walking around here at Apple mm -hmm. Park. Like we love glass. Steve Jobs Theater is just yes. amazing yeah. glass everywhere yeah. and refractions. And, and even I'm holding an iPad yeah. that has a glass screen, yeah. so it yeah. feels also unified. You love with... glass in your home, you love windows, you love <laughs> yeah. the idea that you, know, you want, so you want feels light natural. to be able to come through things, you know, and uh, so it does feel natural. Um, I think we have time for one more question, so I wanted yep. to shift yep. the conversation to iPadOS. Oh, I, I love think that it, one. I think it got the best reaction from the mm -hmm. crowd. Uh, I've had the, the uh, fortunately being able to attend a couple of WWDCs, and it, it, there's always something. Last mm -hmm. year was the calculator app. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Everybody cheered, and it was great. Um, and for me personally, I, I like to use my iPad a lot, and I, I cheered when when yeah. we got like multitasking finally in the tab yeah. bar, and it, it's really exciting. So what I wanted to ask um, now that the iPad is a more powerful mm -hmm. machine. Um, why now? Like, what, yeah. Why did you decide to do it this year? Well, the iPad is just such an important product for us. Uh, obviously, not only is it super popular, but it's, and you probably have heard me say it a, a, a million times, someday they may put it on my tombstone. <laughs> it's, it's a, the iPad is a magical sheet of glass. They become pretty much anything you want it to be. And it's that versatility that we love to celebrate for iPad. And what we did through yesterday's announcements of the new iPad OS is allow you to take it even further if you want to, right? What we wanted to make sure is that 
for people who love the iPad the way it is, this very simple environment where you run a single app at a time and it's very focused and very easy to use, we wanted to preserve that. However, let's say you're a power user and you want to do more, we enabled the ability for you to use an entirely new windowing system that we built. Uh, new windows, much like you would have on your Mac, they can overlap, you can put them where you want. We have a new menu bar that you can use menu items, much again as you're similar to the Mac. But all these done in a very iPad sort of way, right? They're done in a way that's instantly familiar because you're familiar with using some of these things, like the controls for the windows are similar to what you, you know, the same as what you have on the Mac, yet they're implemented in, a, in an iPad sort of way. And I'm very excited about it. The reaction was fantastic yesterday. It, it was really cool. And, and having also the more pointy pointer. Yes, the pointer um, pointer. Who, for, would, who would think? Yeah, when, when you're on a yeah. more laptop mode, yeah. I, I think it's great for productivity with the multitasking, the tab bar. I'm specifically excited for background tasks. Oh, yeah. Because I've, I've, me as a content creator, and I'm, yeah. I'm usually uploading videos, and I'm in Google Drive or iCloud, yeah. and I'm up uploading a video, and I have to stay on the app, and I cannot yeah. continue my work on another app. Yeah. So I, 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 like, why? So finally here, yeah. um, that's a feature that I really am going to enjoy. Well, and that's a big one for us, too, and it's another example of how to do it in an iPad sort of way, because... You know, sometimes on your Mac or your Windows device, you're not even sure the type of things that are running in the background. They just are. And we always want to be very sensitive to battery life. That's one of the reasons that we, we treated background tasks the way we did. So what we did here is we did it in a very iPad sort of way. Mm -hmm. For one is the developer has to you know, use the IP APIs to declare that they're doing background, you know, declare what they're using them for. We expose that then to the user. So the user sees the things that are running in the background. So A, you no longer have to be in that... Final Cut app, for example, that you were in, you can leave it. Uh, the background task will show that that's running. You then have the control to know everything that's running, right, and the ability to stop it if you want. And so we think that's a, a very nice way of implementing it. And I think our users are going to like that. So that's cool. So so if I'm getting this right, developers need to tell Apple what through, through the happening. APIs, yeah, through the okay, APIs. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. So which then gets exposed to the user. Right? Okay, so in um, for example, in Mac, you don't really know what's running in the background. There's Cor no correct. I mean, and sometimes it's things that become running within Safari. They're running. You know, okay. it's just you know, it's a different experience. You know, a, a lot of it through legacy, right? If it, what's happened through Macs or through personal computers, and iPad has always given us an opportunity, especially when we do something from scratch. The, how would we do that even better, mm -hmm. right? And so this is, a, I think, a really uh, nice way of doing background tasks that allow you the power that you're looking for. Yeah. So when you leave that app and you want it to still do its thing, it can, but you also then have the control to say, well, that isn't the thing I wanted to have, <laughs> right? Or I'm going to pause that for now, or I'm going to yeah. resume that later. I, I think that's incredibly useful, and I'm for sure going to use my iPad more now. I'm excited yeah. about that. Uh, are you personally more a Mac user or an iPad user? Well, yeah, I'm going to tell you the truth. I, I, to me, it's never a trade-off for one or the other. Okay. And it isn't for most of our users. You know, I've always hated that. Well, is the Mac going to replace the iPad or the iPad going to replace the Mac or whatever? The reality is for so many people, you really do have both, mm -hmm. you know, if you can afford it, of course, you yeah. know, but you have both because both of them, while they have overlap for their use, they have things that they're uniquely good at. Uh, Steve used to talk about pickup trucks versus cars, and there's some truth to that, right? There's yeah. some, you know, utility and, 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 and more things that you would do in some directions on the Mac, yet there's some things that you can do in other directions mm -hmm. on the iPad. And again, they both have overlap. There's things they can do in common, in common ways. And mm -hmm. uh, we're excited that, you know, again, iPad is incredibly versatile and now just became even more powerful. Awesome. Um, I think that's all the time we have. Thank but you, Adrian. Thank you so much for, for the time. It's incredible getting to talk to you specifically about, you know, marketing and all this buzz. I know it's been a tiring couple of days for you. No, it's um, ex exhilarating. Are you kidding? <laughs> this is the best. <laughs> well, how long have you been at Apple specifically? I, 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 I had my 39th anniversary yesterday. 39th. 39th wow, yesterday. coming up yeah. on 40 years. Yes, yes. I, it makes my mind explode when I think of the number. It's just amazing. That's so cool. Yes, Thank yes. you So again. you're right. I was here. I joined here when I was eight years old. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> eight years old. <laughs> Why does everybody laugh? <laughs> <laughs> you, you should have some cool stories that maybe we can get into. More than I can count. Yes, at a later yes. date. But thank yes. you so much, Greg. Thank you very much.